Hey guys, Michael Stillwell here from Stillwell Pianos in Mesa, Arizona, and check out this weird piano. We normally do not get these pianos like this, but I am so, so, so excited because I'm a piano technician, and this is an Eibach. This is a 1911 Eibach from Germany. These pianos are so highly regarded for us technicians. We rarely, rarely, rarely see them. I personally have only seen probably two or three of them in my entire life. I've never had one in the store, and I've never seen one in Arizona here either. And we did buy this from a local seller here in Arizona. Um, and we worked with this lady for a very, very long time. She did not want to sell this thing for anywhere near what we wanted to pay for it. But we finally closed the deal. I think it was about a year and a half worth of talking to her about this piano. So what makes these things so cool is, is that first of all, Eibach is the oldest German piano manufacturer in Germany. So they've been, I think they're on their sixth or seventh generation right now. They started in the 1700s and their son, her grandson, great, 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 great son, grandson is still running it to this day. Another really cool thing about Eibach is Eibach is the company that invented, or not invented, but came up with the idea of using cast iron as the plate. Um, before that, we weren't using cast iron, and this switching to cast iron really allowed the piano to be strung at a tighter tension, which made the piano louder, so it would fill larger concert halls and stuff like this. And they were the ones who kind of came up with that, so that's a huge, huge deal. The next thing I want to show you, come check this out. So in a normal baby grand or grand piano or even an upright piano, you have your normal treble wire and then you have bass strings stacked on top of the treble wire and that's what we call a stack. But look at this, we have two stacks here. Um, that's super unique, I've never seen this before. But the idea here is that normally these bass strings would be over here, right? All of these strings are kind of going like this. So if I pulled these bass strings over here, I would lose a few inches. I'd probably have to cut off about here which means that these strings won't be as rich and as full. So by doing this technique and pulling them over here and doing three or two stacks, this allows these bass strings to be a lot larger or longer, which makes the piano a lot more rich and full. Eibach is known for this. Eibach is known for making small pianos that just blow other pianos out of the water. Um, and this is one of the ways they do this. Uh, it's very, very unique. Never seen it before, but it came out perfectly. Um, this thing sounds and plays amazing. So I'm going to pull the action and show you what we got going on on the inside. Um, and then we'll play the piano for you guys. Uh, but let me, let me go pull the action real quick. All right, now that I got the action out of the piano, I can show you what's going on on the inside. So the first thing I notice, as a piano technician, this doesn't look normal at all. <laughs> Normally you have sections. You have like maybe three sections. Sometimes you have four sections. But those are your breaks. Those are the breaks on the plate where you have plate struts going all the way through. And so we have these little breaks. This one we have quite a few. Also, these hammers are higher than these hammers. That's normal. A lot of times, not a lot of times, every time with um, grand pianos, over here you have the bass strings are stacked on top of the treble strings, right? So you're having to have your hammer height be a tad bit higher to accommodate the difference in size. But with this piano, we have two stacks, remember? So we have a whole nother stack over here that's even higher than our first stack. As you can see, these hammers are also tapered. That allows them to strike eh, just perfectly. See, they're not gonna rub against each other. It also makes these hammers lighter. So we uh, counteract that down here in the whippings themselves so that everything plays super evenly and super smooth. We have a wood hammer rail. Um, for those of you that don't look inside of um, pianos like this, old American or old German pianos, this is all redone. <laughs> this is not what a 100-year-old piano looks like. This is a 1911 piano, remember. So this is 110 years old. This isn't what it looks like. So this has all been, I bet you they sandblasted this key frame or the hammer rail itself, sandblasted the keys. Um, they replaced some parts on it, but in general, this is a fully rebuilt piano. Also, this upstop rail is typically on a normal piano over here. So it's kind of cool to have it right on top of the key button. So I'm gonna push this back in and I'm gonna play it for you guys so you can hear what it sounds like. I really want you guys to be listening to how sweet and soft and pure this sound is. Keep in mind, this is a tiny, tiny piano. Um, so it's not very easy to do as a manufacturer, but they did it so, so well. I gotta say, this is probably one of the top um, five foot pianos that I've ever had in our store. One other thing, these keys are not plastic. So uh, read between the lines. <laughs> so they're in very, very good shape mint condition. I don't see any chips. There's one tiny little one right here. Other than that, everything's perfect. Let me push this back in and I'll play this thing for you.